Why, good morning. Wow, it is a beautiful day here in the Unity neighborhood. So I'm glad that all of you have joined us today. And those of you online, we are so glad that you're with us also. It's a brand new day. So let's celebrate it by standing and singing together. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Clap your hand and celebrate. The power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, hey, hey. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Clap your hand and celebrate. The power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, 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 it's a brand new day. Faith can move a mountain, a path that stormy sea. Love can be a fountain, a pouring over me. Hope can build a future where we can truly say, the past is past, free at last. It's a brand new day, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Clap your hands and celebrate. The power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, 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 it's a brand new day. Doubts become believing that death can be destroyed. Painful, lost, and grieving can open us to joy. The dawn of resurrection can chase our fears away. The past is past, free at last. It's a brand new day, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Clap your hands and celebrate. The power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, hey, hey. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Clap your hands and celebrate. The power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, 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 it's a brand new day. Hey, 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 it's a brand new day. Hey, 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 it's a brand new day. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, wow, the power of love. Here we are. So good morning and welcome to Unity of Daytona Beach. We are so glad you're here. We're so glad you chose us this morning. So many good things happening here. And right now I get to share today's daily word, and that word is trust. I affirm I place my trust in God. So would you speak that with me? I place my trust in God. Few things are, great, are a greater comfort than deep and abiding trust in God. When I trust, I move more confidently through life. I feel the wind at my back and am made strong in the face of adversity. In the past, I may have felt disappointed when I misplaced my trust. The things of the world are impermanent. Even people come and go. The truth of God as the one presence and one power in the universe and in my life are everlasting, unchanged and unchanging through all the seasons of life. Even as I grow, evolve, and deepen my spiritual understanding, God is always my source, the inspiration I return to again and again. My freedom to seek and discover lies in the awareness that I can always, always trust in God. Today's word is inspired by Isaiah 26, verse 4. Trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord God, you have an everlasting rock. 
Wow. For in the Lord God, you have an everlasting rock. Wow. So please pray with me. As we settle into today's service, we take a deep breath. We consciously connect with spirit. Let's breathe again. And as we exhale, we let go of all distractions and become fully present, ready to receive the messages that are ours to learn. Focused on trust, we celebrate that we know God is our source. We know God is ever-present, and we know God's good is guaranteed in our lives as we align with truth. Indeed, we place our trust in God, and we are grateful. We now affirm that we are in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge your presence and your power, O blessed Spirit, in your divine wisdom, now erase our every human limitation, and from the pure substance of your love, bring into manifestation our world according to your perfect law. And because we align with and cooperate with that law, so it is. Amen. So now please join me in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I relax and visualize I am healed, whole and healthy I am well, I am well I am healed, whole and healthy I relax and visualize I am healed, whole and healthy I am well I am well, I am healed, hold and healthy, I accept and I receive, I am healed, hold and healthy, I am well, I am well, I am healed, hold and healthy, angels are watching over me. I am healed, whole, and healthy. I am well. I am well.
use it. <laughs> Please join me in speaking our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotence. So now it's the time, that time in our service when we welcome those of you who are here for the first time with us at Unity of Daytona Beach. So if this is your first Sunday with us, would you raise your hand so we can share a packet of information with you? Okay, we see. Okay, over here and here. And another one, I think Ursula has that one. So, well, you are so welcome. It is our prayer that you will find something that really touches your heart here, that you'll come back and join us again. But today is your lucky day because this is ice cream Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So good day to choose to come. So, okay, we want to thank the book sales, Joy and her team for the book sales. They raised over $1,000, $1,020. We got some good reading out of it. We got to recycle those books we had finished. So it was great, Joy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who participated. And yesterday, we were so blessed by Deborah Striegel, who was here teaching yoga. There were 11 of us here, and it was wonderful. And... But, She's, okay, see that energy. Woo! Oh, we were so blessed, and there's a chance she's going to be offering it monthly, one, one Saturday a month, so put that energy out there. So today we have the ice cream social, and uh, Dan, did you want to speak about the ice cream social? Or? Okay, it's, it's beyond words. Just come, just show up, and have, the youth are going to be providing uh, your ice cream treats, and it's going to be a great time after service. But we do have a special announcement from Royce, the dog days of summer man. Hey, Carol. So I didn't pre uh, prepare anything, so be kind with me. <laughs> So yeah, there's going to be food. Everything we do re g works around food. But really, this isn't about food. This is for people who love pets. Is there anyone in here that loves animals? There you go. So what we're doing is, when we were shut down for a while, I missed so many people. And I missed these stories. And now we're having all these social events so we can hear these stories and we can connect again. Because our strength is in our connection of us coming together and getting to know each other. And that's what this is about. It's not about hot dogs or food. But we're going to tell stories. I'm going to tell you a quick story about my dog, Pepper. Pepper's a five-pound uh, chihuahua. In its head, it's a mastiff. And it weighs 160 pounds. And if anyone comes to the door, it will stand in the way and put its paws in the, And it will protect us. But privately, Pepper will tell me. She'll tell me. She'll say, honestly, I'm scared. I am overcompensating. But she has committed to me that if we get attacked by these, she's got us covered. These are the kind of stories we want to hear, and we want to share, and we want to love on you, and that's what it's all about. Thank you so much. We already love Pepper now. <laughs> okay, so um, our next... Uh, announcement is very dear to my heart since I'll be the instructor for the Reiki, first degree Reiki class in August. Uh, it's the same class on the 14th and the 21st. Um, and I'm really excited about teaching. I've been doing Reiki for over 20 years, teaching all, almost all of that time. And um, so if it's on your heart to join us, the, there's, the sign up is ready out in the, in the entryway. So today, uh, after service, we will also have um, Rose is here to pray with you. Chaplain Rose, Chaplain Sue, and Chaplain Rusty are here and so willing and loving in their prayers to support whatever your prayer needs are. So thank you.
I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. Inside there is peace, Inside there is joy, inside there is more than enough. Inside there is peace, inside there is joy, inside there is sacred love. I will leave this day as it is. Go inside to find my God. I will leave this day as it is. Go inside to find my God. Inside there is peace. Inside there is joy. Inside there is more than enough. Inside there is peace. Inside there is joy. Inside there is sacred love. I will leave this life as it is. Go inside to find my God. I will leave this life as it is, go inside to find my God. Go inside to find my God. I'll go inside to find my God. So I invite you all to join me now as we take this special time to go inside to find our God. So as we do that, I just invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Just begin to settle in right where you are. And allow this to give you an amazing gift. The gift of allowing. The gift of surrendering. The gift of knowing that each and every moment of our lives We make a choice. And right here, right now, we go inside to find our God. And so let us do that together as we focus on our breath. So join me as we inhale deeply. And as we release that breath. And so out this time, I just invite you to focus on your breath. That helps us to step away from the outer condition and anchor our awareness within. And so we breathe together again, another deep breath. 
hold for just a moment and release completely. Stillness. A time out from distraction. A little rest from the thinking mind. And we do that by bringing our awareness to our heart space. We focus our attention there. Few things are greater comfort than deep and abiding trust in God. Deep and abiding trust in God. Take a breath in. Release that breath. And so for these next few moments, I just invite you into a place of deep, abiding trust in God. And we breathe in. And we exhale. In that trust, we know peace. In that trust, we know love. In that trust, we know calm. And in that trust, we know joy. Take a deep breath in. Release that breath. I invite us into the silence now as we immerse ourselves in the one presence and the one power. Take another deep breath in with me. Release that breath. And as we come back together in this place and in this space, all circumstances 
all outcomes, all concerns. We place our trust in God, in an expectancy of faith and absolute good. Take a breath in. Release that breath. <coughs> and we come back together. And so it is. Amen. be there for each other in these times when we don't know what to do. All we can do is be there for each other and help each other through. All we can do is be there for each other in these times when we don't know what to do. All we can do is be there for each other and help each other through. Twists and turns, unexpected, Day by day, moving on. I don't have all the answers, come what may, right or wrong. All we can do is be there for each other in these times when we don't know what to do. All we can do is be there for each other and help each other through. Crashing waves touch the shore. Time moves faster every day. Ebb and flow, no control. All that's left to say, all we can do is be there for each other in these times when we don't know what to do. All we can do is be there for each other and help each other through and help each other through. Thank you. So sweet, yes? So sweet. So before I begin, I just have to say, um, to help each other through, wow. Thank you, God, huh? And that's exactly what this community is all about, and I'm so proud and privileged to be a part of that. And I want you to know that everybody that's here in this sanctuary and everyone who joins us online, just as Royce was sharing, you know, it's about connection and being there for one another. Thank you, God, that we have a beautiful, safe place to be in, to do that today in this world right now. It's no small thing, friends, and each and every one of you are part of that. So I'm going to invite you to... Okay, I got caught up there. Just a second now. It's touching on my heart. So <laughs> so welcome, welcome, welcome. One of my prayer partners says, good, grand, glorious morning. So I'm going to share that with you. Good, grand, glorious morning to everyone. Yes? <laughs> so how are you on this very cool July morning? 
<laughs> We're cool in here, aren't we? Well, is there some really great news? There's something cool waiting for us after service. They say it's not about the food, but it's about Jesus. <laughs> if you feed them, they will come. <laughs> and we don't mind. We get, we get all that benefit to go with it, yes? Lots of fun, lots of fun. So today's lesson is safe, secure, and supported. So I'm going to ask you right off the bat, as they say, breathe into those three words with me. Safe, secure, and supported. So take that in for just a minute. And how do those three words feel to you? And what images come to your mind as you hear those words or take them in? Safe, secure, and supported. So close your eyes for just a minute. And breathe in safe and exhale. Breathe in secure and exhale. Breathe in supported and exhale. Then I want you to notice how you feel. And just gently open your eyes as you choose to. And how easy did that feel to you? And what did you feel? Anybody can share that with me. What did you feel on that? Anything? Thankful. For me, peace, calm, stability, a sense of well-being. All of those things came to me as I was preparing this lesson. So I want you all to know that I do every bit of this work with you, okay? <laughs> There's no freebie card standing over here, huh, Carmen? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and so I thought all those sensations and the thoughts occurred to us and to me as we closed our eyes and simply focused on them, right? So I want you to notice that, that that's what happened as we took the time just to journey inward there. And compare those very same feelings as we come back and we were only looking or as we look at whatever's going on with our outer eyes. There's a difference, isn't there? And as we just look out here physically in the human condition, it can be tempting to feel, particularly right now, in today's world, that there's shortages of things and that there's a lack of safety in places, a lack of security in places, and a feeling of being unsupported in places. Wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say that? But friends, I am here to remind us once again, and the beauty is that we get to come back together each and every single Sunday and reawaken, and reawaken again to the truth. And I'm here to remind us that life indeed is consciousness, and so is the awareness of living from prosperity. And I want you to know that part of prosperity is to feel safe, is to feel secure, and to feel supported. All of that is included in that. And that further, it is indeed our divine inheritance to experience that. And so before all of the yes buts want to float in from the ego mind, I want you to take a breath and release that with me because we came here to live abundantly and that we deserve an opulent life and that we came here not to just survive, but we came to thrive. And how can I say that to you, knowing all this hoo-ha is going on out there? How can I say that? I can say that because what? Who are you? Who are you? Who am I? Children of God, right? We've got all that God DNA running all through us, <laughs> around us, in us, as us, right? <coughs> but what is it? In, and the best news ever is what? That the universe is biased in our favor. It's like it's always going, go, girl, go, go, girl, go. <laughs> go, guy, go, go, guy, go. And that all that is required for us to really feel this and take it in and live from that place is just a shift, just a shift in consciousness and a willingness towards a life of growth. Willingness 
and wanting to be in the flow of a life of growth. Doesn't sound too tough, does it? So here we are, friends. We are continuing to raise our awareness of our prosperity consciousness through the book that we've been talking about by Unity Minister Reverend Eric Butterworth, his book of spiritual economics, and that has been our guide. So today we're going to dive into what Eric refers to as, and I just, you know, I'm like, wow, how, do, how does it always just work out this way? <laughs> Security in a changing world. Could it possibly be any more appropriate? Uh, my way of thinking. <coughs> as well as how we look at money and what meaning do we place on that. So again, spirit is good to us all the time. I think that these truth lessons that we have been immersed in are just so appropriate for everything that we're facing right here, right now. That's what I believe. Divine order, divine timing is always present. And for us to remember that there is always a spiritual solution to every worldly condition. More good news. You know, we did not just get <laughs> dropped right here and said, good luck. <laughs> Hope that works out for you. <laughs> no, we came fully equipped with absolutely everything that we need. And further than that, I want to go back to how this started. And we have one another to help us through. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> and we, get, we came with a sense of expectancy and that we can claim that sense of expectancy anchored in our faith, that expectancy of good. So I want to share this affirmation with us. It says, I am safe and secure for I know who I am, a richly endowed child of God. God's supportive substance is all around me. So I'm going to invite you into that with me. Would you speak that with me, please? I am safe and secure, for I know who I am, a richly endowed child of God. God's supportive substance is all around me. And because of that very truth, we thrive and live out our divine destiny. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Security in a changing world. Is that really possible? You want to go? Yeah. Is that really possible today? Yeah. Today? Yes. Dan, I'm so glad you're back over there again. <laughs> and I dare say that it depends on what we think, what our belief systems are, about security. So what does security represent to us? Public opinion survey, su survey suggests that the one thing most people desire in life more than anything else is security. Take a breath, because we want to go, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> but probably if we look deep enough, yes, we do. And that's okay, too. And that security often represents safety to most folks as well. So Butterworth tells us this. He says there are two basic drives within every person is no surprise, human and divine. Humanly, we seek to settle down, to be safe, to build fences, and to be secure. But divinely, we were created to express, to grow, and to extend our horizons. Now, you've heard me share this with you these past few weeks. Think of the difference. Think of the outer condition that's going on right now. One, this is this is my perception of it, one that perhaps wants to give us the message of constriction, shortages, all those types of things. And I'm going to invite you to notice what's happening right here in this community. Expansion, growth, increase, that's what's happening in here. And we are all part of it. So I just want you to keep noticing that, all right? So further, he says, if we had not risen above the human inclination to be safe at all costs, we would still be living in caves, he says, if indeed the human race would still be living at all. When people think only of being or playing it safe, they stifle the urges of personal growth and advancement. And haven't we all done that? We have all, I dare say, at least I'm going to say, I'll speak for myself. Haven't we played it safe? I know I have. 
There's places in my life where I have chosen to play it safe rather than perhaps use all divine ideas that were right there waiting for me. Now, here's some good news. Here's what I believe. Don't you worry, what, don't worry your pretty little head over this because if you have a lesson that spirit knows is your lesson to live out and that you came to learn, it's going to happen at some point, at some point. And this safety that we're referring to here is all about how we are living, not physical safety. Of course, we treat ourselves and make choices for our own physical safety, of course. Safety first, always that way. But we make these choices. Here's the difference. We want to make our choices not out of fear, but out of honoring ourselves. Can you feel the difference in that with me? But out of honoring ourselves and creating well-being for ourselves. That, my friends, is in alignment with living abundantly, and it absolutely is. Each and every one of us, including me, it is our responsibility to ourselves. Take a breath. We're not going to sit around and wait for somebody else to hand that to us. He tells us that security is much more than a financial means, not just money. Security is much more psychological. Get this with me. It's much more psychological than financial. And how do we know? How do we know where we're operating from? How are you feeling? That's how you know. That's your test. How are you feeling? And so we notice that. Feeling is the key. Note it, and then what are we going to do? Then we're going to notice our motivation behind the action that we're taking. Why are we doing what we are doing? And we don't get to say, because they made me. <laughs> no. Why are we doing what we are doing? And so the question is always, are we acting from fear and anxiety? If we are acting from fear and anxiety, chances are the outcomes won't be quite as pretty as we had wanted. He said in the book, pitfalls. You'll have some pitfalls there. Or are we keeping our thoughts centered on God's limitless resource of good? Can you feel the difference? What are we thinking? What is our motivation? What are we thinking and what is our motivation when we do what we do? And we know this, that it's a universal law that the patterns that you hold in mind tend to influence your circumstances. That's one of our basic principles here. And from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verse 24, says, I love this one, I believe, help me heal my unbelief. And it's okay, friends, because in my way of thinking, if we all had it all sewed up 24-7, I might be standing here talking to empty seats. We would have already made all of our ascension. Whew, we got that one covered. No, we're still here learning together, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So it's okay, friends. Living opulently says that we get to ask for what is required for us to assist us on this life's journey and what's required in the very moment. And sometimes in that very moment, it is heal my unbelief. All that's a going on out there. I want to stay in truth. I want to believe. I want to trust in my God, absolute good, everywhere equally present. I want to trust that I'm standing on holy ground, and I'm anxious, and I feel a little afraid at times, and I get caught up, and it's okay, and it's okay. We start again. We wake up one more time, right? And we can say once again, I am safe, I am secure, and I am supported. And I'm choosing not to look out here for it, but I'm going to go right in here and find it. And find it. Know this, friends. God is life. God is love. And God is absolute good. Unchanging at all times. Now take a breath because I'm about to give you something. Butterworth says, God does not heal. God is. Our consciousness heals as it accepts the flow of divine life. 
He's a big teachings friend. Heal my unbelief that all I really need to do is a shift in consciousness. But that I could know that. Because we know that, right? God's always pouring forth that good. Always, always, always. It is us that have to get into the alignment with it. That's the shift in our consciousness. This is big, big work. Take a deep breath. Release that breath. I wrote in here, we must all be spiritual giants. Or we wouldn't be getting these messages, right? <laughs> that we live, move, and have our being. I love this. He said this in the book. We live, move, and have our being under the shadow of the Almighty. And I took that into my prayer time this morning. Under the shadow of the Almighty. We're covered. We're covered. You can say it affirmatively in a shorter way. God's got this. <laughs> God's got this. And I'm, I'm going to line up with it. Yes, somebody's doing a happy dance over there. We should all be doing some happy dances in our seats. Yes. Listen to your consciousness honestly and follow its leading courageously. Oh, don't we do this? I do this. We get a message. We get a little divine spiritual nudge. And we'll go must not be what that meant. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm looking for an easier way. Surely there's an easier way, isn't there? <laughs> Motivation is key. So friends, in this, whatever you do in the way of your investments or managing your financial affairs, do it out of the consciousness of being in the divine flow. Keep yourself centered in God. He says so that when the investment reports come in that none of us want to look at right now, <laughs> but that when the investment reports come in that we don't, he says, flutter like the flag in the wind. And I wrote in there more like a gale force wind right now, huh? But when that happens, no, keep your mind and your thoughts centered in God and God's good and God's abundance. And so I say, let's use this as a reminder. I have this other affirmation for us. That I give thanks to God as the source of my supply, and I bless whatever it is you want to bless, your bank account, your investments, whatever that may be to you, as a channel through which it may manifest. But where does it come from? Where is the source? God is our source. God is our source. And then notice this is for you, that this spiritual law of truth is always present for you at all times and working on your behalf. So if you don't like what you're seeing, take a breath. We're going to be courageous, and we're going to bless it anyway. We're going to bless it. We're going to bless it and give thanks, knowing that God is our source. And he invites us, to to be aware, to be aware. Because remember, friends, what we say why are we doing what we are doing? Our motivation is key. So then why do we save? Why are we saving? It's because, is it because we're afraid of tomorrow, he says? Do we doubt the ever-present substance of the universe? He says, no, saving is actually a very mature practice. However, when we do it to get into a high vision, to save for opportunities, not emergencies, what a much better way to look at things, don't you think? And so if you don't believe me at all, <laughs> test it out for yourself, and that's perfectly fine because I'm just here sharing truth with you. But it's ultimately up for each and every one of us to practice it for ourselves. And at minimum, it will simply make you feel better. <laughs> that's the truth. That's the truth because think of it yourself. Do we want to live when, <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, oh, no? Or do we want to believe in trust and trust? Go to that higher vision. Let your savings program be a divinely ordered process. It is our responsibility to keep watch over our thoughts. See and feel yourself living in the boundless sea of affluence. How do those words sound? I said, thank you, Eric. See yourself living in the sea of boundless affluence. Sign us up, yes? Because, friends, that's the problem. See, we just think we don't deserve it, right? 
That's what happens to us. We do deserve it. We do deserve it because who are we? Children of God. Children of God. Eric says, remember, the rich mentality will not come because of your financial involvements. It must come first out of your steady effort to know God as your supply. Out of this awareness, you will feel safe, secure, and supported at all times. At all times. And by all means, plan for changes. But plan, plan for changes with a creative intention and about new beginnings. Think of it from that creative place and involvement, not one of limitation and constriction. We can still stay open. We can still stay open. We know we cannot control the stock market. We already would have, yes. Or the dollar. And money may get depleted. And things get worn out, lost, and stolen. But what endures? Ideas divine ideas endure forever and we have access to them at all times there is no shortage somebody start clapping <laughs> eric tells us that there is little likelihood that your life can become fully functioning with prosperity unless you have a positive created attitude toward money he calls it the money enigma when now, we've all heard this one, right? Here it comes. Money is the root of all evils. We've all heard that, haven't we? <laughs> Take a breath. Some good news coming your way. This is the most misquoted of all Bible passages. What Paul was really saying in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 is, the love of money is the root of all evils. Take a breath. Here it comes. Money is innocent. <laughs> yes, money is innocent, isn't it? And we heard last week, we're not here to serve two masters. No, nope. we're here to know and live from the truth that God is our source and God is our supply. It is the love of money, the consciousness in which you use money, and the right attitude towards the money is key. Get a positive attitude towards your thoughts about money. Money is good. Don't you want to like go, oh, they said that in church. Money is good. <laughs> money is good. And money is God in action. And it's required here in the physical world, isn't it? But it's not just about getting the money either. It is about letting go of any of our negativity centered around it. Centered around it. That our thoughts and feelings about, about, about it, make ne we make it negative or we can bless it and bless the divine substance. Can you see now with me, connect the dots with me, why we do an affirmation of abundance each and every time before we do our love offering here each and every Sunday? That's the reason, friends. We want our consciousness to shift and to be in alignment with truth. And what is our relationship to it? What is our relationship to it? Do we believe, friends, once again, that we are standing on holy ground and that God's substance is all around us at all times? Again, knowing that there is no spot, that God is not. And can we begin to treat our money and our finances as holy? I thought, wow. Could we do that? It's all of God, isn't it? It's all of God. So can we not treat that equally holy and bless everything that we're doing? Because it absolutely is divine supply, that it absolutely is God in energy right there, God in action. Can we begin to treat it as holy? And Eric invites us to feel good about making contact with the divine current, he calls it. Hold the currency with the joyous feeling that you are in the flow. It's going to shift how we handle our money, is my prayer. And friends, I'm inviting that response to us, whether it's $1 or 1000 And he tells us to look at that bill 
And I'm going to say, now, you know, we all do so many things electronically. We hardly hold on to money much anymore or write a check, any of those types of things. But in whatever way you are dealing with your finances that represents money to you, I'm going to invite you to imagine, to focus in on it and focus your attention with that loving inscription that's on our bills. And we know what it is. In God we trust. Isn't it funny? We're, we're so funny as human beings. It's no accident that that got put on there, do you think? In God we trust. In God we trust. That I place my trust in the allness of infinite supply. That's what we're trusting in now. Think about that. Think about that. Many years ago, through this to truth teaching, I developed a habit of blessing my bills. I don't know, it was one time when Carmen was teaching me something, probably this very class, and I got into the habit of blessing my bills. And I had never done that prior to being here in Unity. It was more like, oh, Lordy, I got to pay what? <laughs> no, I was blessing, blessing that as I sent them out. And then I also got into a habit back when I wrote checks. <laughs> we don't write too many checks anymore, most of us, but I do. And I, I, at times I do. And so I placed in the little memo area there on the check, I-G-G-I-R-A-I-E-G-T-Y-G. -G -E now somebody looking at that is like, I don't think this lady knows how to spell. <laughs> I give generously. I receive abundantly. I expect good. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now I'm going to invite all of us to start doing that in our finances whatever way you're doing it. And you can shorten it down, but think of your interactions that you do all along when you're going to the store, wherever, getting that cup of coffee. Bless that. Bless it. We're going to start blessing it as it goes out and blessing it when it comes in. And why am I doing this? God doesn't need my blessing. I know. <gasps> but God does not need my blessing. I need the awareness of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Can you see that with me? And a desire to stay in the creative flow. I want to stay in the creative flow. So bless it all. Because when we bless it, that means to confer prosperity upon, to confer happiness upon. So in whatever way you're handling money in any way, I'm going to invite you to infuse it with positive attitudes and to bless it. And speaking of positive attitudes and blessing us, I'm going to invite our beloved prayer, prayer chaplain coordinator, Rusty, to come forward and share a little bit about her prosperity consciousness with us. I am so excited. I probably need to be tied down, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> Listen to what she says. I did. Okay, in late May when she started the spiritual economics with Eric Butterworth, I said, okay, I'm going to do it again. I've done it before. I've been in unity for 46 years. I know this stuff works. It's time for, like, you know, quick start. Let's, let's have some fun with this. My life is really good, but I wanted to have fun. Whoa. So the day, that Tuesday after, we were talking on the phone about chaplain business, and she said, Reverend Teresa said, Rusty, I want you to notice. As soon as she heard that, I heard rainbows bursting in the air. I heard stars clapping. I saw sunlight. I, I mean, it was just, you know, those moments when something that you never, ever forget, that happened. Rusty, I want you to notice the abundance and the good in your life and give thanks for it. First thing I did, I went to the gas station. I pulled up and I went, oh my goodness, look, all these pumps have gas. I can just pull up. I can put gas in my car. I have a credit card. I am so blessed. Thank you, God. I got gas. <laughs> a couple weeks later, I went to the gas station. Well, I was driving and there are two gas stations, mine and another one. And the other one had gas 40 cents cheaper than the gas station I always go to. Now, I'm looking at that, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going there, because I've been asking, I've been blessing, I've been noticing. I pull up, sure enough, it is 40 cents cheaper. 
I started giving more and more thanks at that moment. I turn the car back on, and it tells me how many miles I get in a tank of gas. I averaged 400 miles to a tank of gas. It said 433 miles would be in this tank of gas. <laughs> now, I'm not, I'm not questioning. I'm not. I'm giving thanks. Every time I turn around, I'm giving thanks. I'll keep on the gas thing. I started getting 37 miles to the gallon instead of 32. 38. Yesterday, I'm getting 39 miles to the gallon. I figure by September, I'm going to get, uh, you know, 1,000 miles to a gallon. Yeah. Also, yesterday, when I get, got gas, turned it on, it said, you have 553 miles in this tank of gas. So I have jumped 130 or 53 miles to a tank of gas in just a few weeks by blessing, noticing, giving thanks. And I, this is true. And I'm not being logical about it. I said, don't, 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 no. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Then I went to Publix right after she commanded me to notice. <laughs> and I walked in and I went, oh, look, the store is full. There is food everywhere. There are cashiers waiting to help me. And I kept blessing and blessing and blessing. A few weeks later, I went in. I had my list. And I happened to notice when I was leaving, everything on my list was buy one, get one. I was like, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I did put some regular price things in there because I want Publix to have their abundance, too. <laughs> and I kept doing this. I kept noticing, giving thanks, accepting, receiving. That was the clue, receiving all the good that God is to give to me. And there's more. I needed to hire an employee, and I kept putting it off. And finally, I said, OK. I need an employee. I want an employee. Hold on. Two different organizations called me and said, Dr. Rusty, would you like to have a teenage intern for the summer? And the state will pay them. <laughs> yep. And we did. And we blessed them. We had fun with them. They were great. One was so good, we hired her. And I paying her what I would pay an experience office worker because I figure I'm sharing this abundance. Fourth of July weekend, I get a call that my sister is seriously ill in a hospital. Here it is a Sunday night on a holiday weekend. And I'm like, okay, God, I am noticing, I'm giving thanks, I am receiving, and I'm knowing this for my sister. She had five doctors at once. She had a team of nurses. She had every staff personnel taking care of her. Now, abundance doesn't have to just be gas, food, or money. It can be love. It can be health. It can be something so touching your heart that is taken care of. And again, I keep giving thanks for everything. In fact, the one doctor told her two days later that he had actually been praying for her in a hospital. A doctor said that to my sister. And she, well, my niece told me. I said, you tell him. He has thousands of people praying for him. Because, of course, I called all my prayer chaplains. Every, you know, I have a whole team. OK, then on my desk one day, I happened to notice the end of the day, it was filled with fruits and vegetables that patients had been bringing in for me. More abundance. I was receiving. I was noticing. I was so pleased. I was so excited. I was like, this stuff really, really works. Then last Saturday, going into the chat, well, <clears throat> I went out to breakfast before the chaplain class. And I was like, they don't have orange marmalade here. This is Florida. Why isn't there orange marmalade on the table? <clears throat> I came in. Chaplain Sue walks in with a box and said, Al and I made the orange marmalade, and it's the best you'll ever taste. <laughs> and she was right. I am having so much fun with this. I'm noticing. I'm giving thanks. I'm open and receptive. I am receiving my good. Then I got an unexpected check in the mail, a really big one. And it was totally unexpected, a really big one. And I tithed on it because I'm a tither. Then I looked at my bills, the electric bill, the water bill, the gas bill. And I'm like, I bless you. I bless you. I have gas. I have water. I have electricity. I am so grateful for this. Well, that check, there you go, unexpected. 
the last Tuesday, uh, Reverend Teresa called me because we talk a lot, and I was telling her how exciting this was, and she wanted me to talk here, and she said, do me a favor and uh, write down a few things. I'm like, oh, darn, I have to write all this down? Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking, if I'm going to write this down, I want something really big on the list. I'm going to blow Reverend Teresa away. So the next day, my office manager brings up the stats for the day. Now, she runs the business. I take care of patients. I, you know, that's who I am. She runs the business. I take care of patients. She said, look at this. I looked at it. She goes, today was an easy day, right? I went, yeah, it really was. I looked down, and it was the best day in 23 and a half years I'd ever had. <laughs> oh, there's more. <laughs> it was the best day by 20%. <clears throat> and I was like, don't question, don't, it was, thank you, God, thank you, universe, thank you, everybody, and I, at this point, I'm thanking ancestors and elves and fairies and angels and everybody else. I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Whew, okay, almost done. It, it kept going on. Oh, yeah, okay, so she asked me again this week, and I said, yeah, I got everything going. I'm thinking, I, want, I still want more. I walked into Publix Friday, and strawberries were 99 cents. <laughs> it said, three, save $3. I was like, yes, I will. <laughs> so I got some, and I got some for friends and staff members. And I walked in, I go, OK, this is truly the gift where the thought means more than you know, the dollar amount of the gift. This stuff works. I've been doing things like this for 46 years. And you see, I wasn't asking for millions of dollars, which I am now, because I figure it's going to come. <laughs> I wouldn't check the lottery this morning because I figured if I, you know, I saw I won $43 million, I might be tempted not to come to church today. <laughs> but I did promise her I would be here no matter what. Reverend Teresa is truly a jewel. You are. You are. Pay attention to what she says. Do it. If I, after all these years in unity, could just decide to notice the good in my life, to enjoy it, to receive it, to ask for more, to just love God, however you call your God, just love it and give gratitude. All day long I hear in the back of my head, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. So one last thing. This morning I went out and looked in my garden, and I have an abundance of weeds. <laughs> And I said, oh, you're so pretty. <laughs> and when I get around to you next Saturday to pull you, I won't have to bend over because you're going to be this tall. <laughs> Notice you're good. I challenge all of you, do this. Do this. It's fun. I've had the best time the last few weeks. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Rusty. <laughs> Making it real. We appreciate that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Principles work, and they're at work for us at all times. Our source truly is God. This is our safety. This is our secure security, and we indeed are fully supported. Do not be anxious about your life. Know that money is a symbol of God's substance. Keep the awareness that it is part of the movement of the divine flow. Give thanks for it as it comes to you and give thanks for it as it goes from you, knowing that there absolutely is no depletion. But actually, there will be an increase because you have stayed in alignment with the flow and that law of circulation. In God we trust. Determine that your money will always be a symbol of abundance for you and not limitation. Make that choice. Make that commitment to yourself. Know who you are. Do not be anxious about your life. True security is all in worthiness, not worth. You are worthy. I am safe and secure, for I know who I am, a richly endowed child of God, God's supportive substance is all around me and each and every one of you. God bless you, and so it is. Amen. Wow, what an 
inspirational morning this has been rusty thank you so much thank you so much for inspiring us with your words beautiful beautiful for the last several weeks we have been um dealing with the idea of prosperity thank you reverend uh, teresa and even though the discussion will go on you know even from this time forward we want to really just um give thanks and celebrate this idea of prosperity. So we're going to do it with what we call a prosperity chant. This is a, a new song, so we're going to take it very slow. You're going to, you know, have a part in it, of course. Uh, there will be several parts where it's going to be a call and response, and there will be parts that we'll be singing together, okay? So please stand, and let's affirm our abundant prosperity as we sing the prosperity chant. What do I want? Oh, what do I desire? What will bring me to my highest good? What do I want? What do I desire? What will bring me to my highest good? Prosperity, Prosperity. I claim it. it. Abundance Abundance. is mine. mine. Love Love flows through me. I feel joy all the time. I can have it. I deserve it. I claim it. It is mine. I can have it. I deserve it. I am it. It is mine. Peace fills my heart. I surrender everything. Health is my birthright. Passion helps me sing. I can have it. I deserve it. I claim it. It is mine. I can have it. I deserve it. I am it. It's my time. I bring it on down. Anything I want, anything I desire, anything that brings me to my highest good. Anything I want, anything I desire, anything that brings me to my highest good. I release and let go. I accept what is mine. I can have what I want. And let God direct the flow. A life is good. A life is fun. A life is great. The song is done. <laughs> that time in our service where we have the opportunity to share our gifts and our ties. Please join me in our affirmation of abundance. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and it is so.
pray with me once again. Take a deep breath in. Release that breath. Join me as we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for the gifts that we've received here this day in all forms. We gratefully send these forth to be more of God's good, more of God's love in action here on planet Earth. We gratefully bless and claim the highest and best for each and every prayer request in our prayer box. We claim this to be so, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ushers. All right, friends, we know the ice cream might be a melting, but here we go. We're going to do the, the prayer for protection together. Then I want everybody to go get their ice cream afterwards, okay? <laughs> here we go. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Please stand and sing the peace song. on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God our Creator, we are family, let us walk with each other in perfect harmony, let peace begin with me, let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally.